me. People often ask me the timeline or the rundown so that they can prepare for what comes up through this ankle injury. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to run through the timeline. You know, people often want to know how long they're going to be on crutches or when they can return to work. Um, how long uh, till they can get into that walking boot or when do they get to go back to the normal two pairs of shoes or two shoes. As you can tell, I'm not in my normal environment or back. All right, guys, I tried. I tried to do a video last week, um, but as you can tell, here we are. I was at my cousin's this past week watching her her kids for a couple days while her and her husband were in the Bahamas. And shortly after I started that video, I heard the light whimpering or um, of the baby waking up. So. I knew that um, my attention was needed elsewhere and I never got to finish the video. So here we are. But you know, as I grabbed coffee that morning, I started to read through the, you know, the, the rundown or the schedule that she gave me with instructions. And after going through it, I thought about the amount of preparation that she put into, you know, all of this to ensure that everything went smooth for her kids and myself while she was out or while she was gone. And then it made me think of the amount of preparation people have to put into while they're out or they're gone during this ankle recovery. Now, I have a lot of people ask me for kind of a brief rundown, like how long were you in a cast for? Um, when did you return to work? Did you have to stay at the hospital or how many nights did you have to stay in the hospital after surgery? Um, when did you move on to a walking boot? Um... When did the swelling stop? When could you wear two pairs of shoes? If you are wondering that, I'm gonna go over that right now. We're gonna do a quick run through of my uh, ankle recovery. So let's jump into it. And I've got my laptop here to help me with some of the dates. So if you see me glancing down, just quick one quick thing. I have yet to meet two people that have the same exact recovery. So this is mine and yours, I can almost promise, is not gonna match this. October 17th, that's when it happened, the big break. Um, I'm going to get into kind of how I, that, the entire break because it's kind of it's kind of interesting. But I was down in the woods um, bow hunting and I had a 12 foot fall or jump, force jump out of my uh, tree stand while I was bow hunting and broke my ankle. Um, it was a Friday night about 6.37 p.m. So... I had to go to the emergency room because uh, it was after normal business hours. Went there, learned it was broke, got my x-rays, and they put on this like half plaster, half ace wrap cast. Um, because it was after hours, it was at the emergency room, they said, you're going to have to wait to see the foot and ankle specialist. Now, at the ER, they were able to do the x-rays at the AER and confirm it was broken there. So I knew it was broken, but what they said was, you have to see the foot and ankle specialist on Monday when he's in because he will determine whether you're going to have to have surgery or not. So I had to wait over the weekend um, and they gave me the instructions of rice, you know, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. So I did that over the next two and a half days. Well, I didn't exactly follow those instructions, but I'll, I'll get into that later. Um, Monday morning, October 20th, I saw the ankle specialist. He looked at the x-rays. He learned it required surgery. And then I asked him a lot of questions, and then we scheduled surgery. Of course, for that appointment, they took off the cast that, you know, they had put on at the ER. He took that cast off so he could look at my foot, and then I had to get another cast on until my surgery happened. Um, my surgery wasn't until eight days after that. So actually, my surgery was 11 days after my break. Why was it this long? I get asked this a lot. 
It was 11 days after, number one, because my doctor only schedules surgery on certain days. So he sees patients, you know, um, in, um, in clinic on certain days, and then he just does surgeries on certain days. So that was one of the reasons. The other reason was my swelling was pretty bad, um, or it was big. My ankle was big, and he said, I cannot do surgery um, when the ankle is this swollen. You are under... Uh, strict instructions, get this swelling down. So pretty much from um, that time I saw the ankle specialist up to surgery, that eight days, I was serious about icing and elevating and trying to get that swelling down. Because he said, if you come back and I see like the ankle like this on surgery, day, I can't do it. So I didn't want to push this back or postpone it any further. So I, I treated that getting that swelling down like it was my job. Um, surgery. October 28th was my surgery. Um, they put two screws in and I was impatient that night. I stayed overnight, but it was just for one night. Um, they pretty much, I think, explained it as like a 24-hour observation period. So I had my surgery, I think, 9 a.m. Um, one morning and I left by noon the next day. Um, so they just, uh, they just, uh, you know, like I said, kind of observed me over that and made sure that everything went well for that 24 hour period. Now I know that this can vary, um, from country to country. I've heard of some people staying a couple days. I've heard of some people going home after surgery and I've heard some people have to stay weeks after surgery if it's, you know, kind of a complicated thing. So after surgery, the next thing that you're going to be looking forward to is, uh, your post-op appointment. And so November 4th was my post-op appointment. I think that's almost exactly a week after my surgery. Um, post-op appointments, I've heard them going anywhere from, I think I had one post-op appointment that was like four or five days after my surgery. And then I've heard of some going out like two or three weeks. Um, but at that appointment, they're going to check your incision. Um, they're going to see how your pain levels are, ask you if everything's been okay for the last, since surgery. Um, they took, of course, they took that ACE wrap um, cast off or the, the splint soft cast, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then when they took that off, uh, I got to see my staples. What? I did not know I had staples in my ankle. Let's just say <laughs> I was a little bit surprised. Um, I just kind of assumed mm, that there was stitches. And so, I don't know, staples are kind of intimidating, like looking and they kind of look badass <laughs> but um they took that out they took the staples out now again I've made a video about the staples being taken out because people asked me about that as well it didn't hurt for me at all it felt like somebody like clipping my fingernails or my toenail like it didn't that didn't hurt at all but um they took the staples out and then I think they put like some kind of strip down the incision um I, maybe to help the skin grow there. Um, and then I got my hard cast on. You guys, that which is like the fiberglass one. Pretty much like that began the longest month of my life. I wasn't a fan of the cast. Let's just say that. I had the cast on for four weeks and it felt like four years. Um, yeah. Anyway, so, so post-op appointment where they took the staples out and I had the hard cast on November 4th. Fast forward through the entire month of November. Long, annoying, not cool. Uh, <laughs> December 1st. Hard cast is taken off and I get to transition into a walking boot. Oh, as I think I say in one of the videos, this is the best day ever. I was so ready to be done with that cast. This is the best feeling in the world. It's it's like not, it's comfortable. We're not. Ah, I'm so excited. All right, let's do this. I think the last couple days I was in that cast before I got the cast off. I started. I was so annoyed and like I didn't want to. I just I like wanted to get off to the couch and just like quick go like a couple steps. I started putting weight on the cast. I shouldn't even say that here, but I'm, it's the truth. So like I started walking with my, don't recommend it. Should not do, don't do it. I'm saying that because when I, they put me in a boot or like 
and I left the clinic in a boot, I was comfortable to start putting weight down. I watched one. Yeah, yeah. Aster is so cute. I am. Get, I think I am getting stronger. I just look like a loser. Baby. Learning to walk again, pretty much. Taking those first couple steps, you feel like you're walking again. Or like, uh, not walking. You feel like you're learning to walk. It. It's very weird. Like, it's hard to explain unless you've done it. Like, um, but anyways. So, I know that that partial weight bearing is hard for some people. Like, honestly, some people, like, have anxiety and, like, a huge fear about starting to put weight on that. I didn't really have that. I was so anxious to start doing it again. Um, but if you do have that, we're going to talk about that later. I know it's, a, I know it can be a hard part. Let's move on. Um, so December 1st, I, the hard cast taken off, transition into that walking boot. Um, and like I mentioned, like I am, I am, I'm not married and I haven't had kids yet. And people say that those are some of the like best days of their life. <laughs> Sadly, this has been one of the best days of my life. I'm not getting you. It's like so freeing. Um, Anyways, uh, I was in that boot for all of, as December 1st, I started wearing shoes then, two normal shoes, January 15th. So seven weeks I was actually in that walking boot. You, you might be able to say I could maybe have started like a week or two um, to wear shoes again, but you have to understand, I'm in Minnesota and I broke my ankle and I'm walking, wearing this boot in December and January. The key months of winter. Ice, snow. So when you go out, like anywhere, you know, when you're out, even walking to your car to go, it's slip, fall, you know. I felt comfortable in that boot and I felt protected. And so I wore that boot um, for those, you know, during that time. Um, because I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to risk falling and slipping on the ice and having my ankle twist again. So I wore it until about January 15th. Um, and then I started, and then I was able to switch into two shoes. And what I mean I was able to switch into two shoes, only a handful. <laughs> I, I, there was only a couple pairs of shoes that fit me. Um, cause some of them, because of the swelling, I still couldn't get my, um, my ankle into. And, um, so I guess you could say that my recovery period was pretty much from like, the break was on October 17th. Well, let's say the 15th just to make it easy. October 15th to January 15th. Three months or 12 weeks. Um, and when I, again, I think I've explained this in other videos. You can't say that my recovery was just that 12 weeks. I'm here four and a half weeks after. And I wasn't on these too long ago again. Um, because I went through my third ankle surgery. But I'll talk about that in a video. So... I hope that gives you, um, you know, a little bit of an idea of um, how my recovery went for from that first surgery and uh, and the timeline of it. Just for a quick recap, broke the ankle, October seventeenth, surgery, October twenty eighth, hard cast, November fourth, was in that for a month. Uh, December 1st or a month later I got the boot and I was in the boot for seven weeks so pretty much I was in a cast from five weeks six weeks yeah so one last thing I want to mention to you guys this recovery timeline is going to be based off a couple things it could be based off of the country where you live maybe they want to keep you in a cast longer or you know I never know how things go with healthcare from country to country another thing is going to be based off of how serious you take this injury I've heard of people well let's just take myself for example I know I didn't mention it earlier I went back out hunting not even 24 hours later and shot my first deer or with a bow and arrow cool right like that's pretty cool yeah, it's cool, but also when I got back to the house, guess what? My ankle was this size. So when I saw the ankle specialist on Monday and he said, you have to get this swelling down, maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe it was that I didn't take the uh, rest, ice, compression, and elevation over the weekend that serious. Could have played into it, right? Um, and you want to know something that dawned on me? I realized where I got that from. My dad had knee surgery. 
He had his surgery and the next day he went out in the woods for eight hours and was out there cutting trees with a chainsaw. Yeah, eight hours in the woods the day after knee surgery. Guess what he did? He was supposed to have like a five weekish recovery with his knee surgery and he pretty much extended that to five months. Guess who takes their doctor's orders and um, their injuries a little more serious now? Me and dear old daddy -o. We listen to our doctors and we follow their instructions now. So um, I just wanna make sure that people understand that. Take your injury seriously. I've learned that lesson the stupid and the hard way. Um, you know, if you want your doctor to take your injury seriously, then you should. So follow their instructions. That's one thing I um, that I always like to mention. The other thing is people so often, they love hearing other people's ankle injury stories and then they compare it so like almost to the point where it gets to be dangerous. It is great to hear other people's injuries, but also remember your injury is not like anyone else's and your recovery. So while mine was like just this brief 12 weeks, like I mentioned, um, some people's are some people are uh, in a cast and a walking boot for months. So um, some of them, guess what? They're, I've heard of people say, hey, I'm up and back and back at it and I'm starting to train for a marathon after six weeks. No, I, that's how long I was in the cast for. Um, and other people say, I'm just getting out of my cast and I'm moving into a walking boot at six months. So um, be careful on the comparisons. It's good to hear other people's, but overall, listen to your doctor. He knows your injury. Follow his instructions. That's all I got for you guys for the recovery. Hope it helped you a little bit. Um, and stay tuned for the Broken Ankle 101 series where we discuss the topics that you're probably not going to um, go over with your doctor. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.